For my third riding tip in this series, I'm gradually, slowly putting together, I want to cover another basic preparation, I suppose you could call it. If you're new to biking, just beginning your journey into this wonderful pastime or this primary mode of transport, if that's what you're using your two wheels for, then I think developing this habit early and making it second nature when riding a bike could really genuinely be a lifesaver for you over the coming years. I'm talking about covering your brakes and in particular your front brakes because with the occasional exception of some cruisers it's the front end of the bike that provides most of your effective stopping power. What do I mean? Well here have a look when you start riding you probably use your hand solely for operating the throttle and when necessary you then change its focus to operate the brake. No problem, that works. In fact it works so well that if you've been watching any racing and the amazingly detailed coverage that we're offered these days of the likes of MotoGP and World Superbikes, you've probably seen exactly this sort of throttle and brake use by some of the world's finest racers. The greatest legend of them all, Valentino Rossi, was a conspicuous four-finger breaker, shifting to full hand on the throttle when the braking was over. And so if it was good enough for him, then you might well reasonably argue that it's good enough for you. Yeah, maybe not. On a circuit where you brake and wind on the throttle at the same points of the track, lap after lap, maybe changing those points by matters of centimetres in order to gain a few hundredths of a second here and there, no doubt it's an undeniably successful method. Unfortunately though, for you and me, we aren't riding in such perfect conditions. Not all our traffic is going in the same direction. Rossi doesn't have to deal with moronic drivers pulling unexpected UEs or dozy pedestrians stepping into the road or dogs and cats with a death wish. Basically, the environment that you and I ride in is full of many, many more unexpected hazards. And so reducing the time it takes for you to apply the brakes is a huge advantage, a massive positive, And you should do everything in your power to improve this element of your riding. You may think that the time to get from here to here is probably only what, a tenth or so? Maybe two tenths of a second? Maybe less. But even at a relatively lowly 100 k's an hour, that could equate to knocking up to six meters off your stopping distance. Or looked at in another way, you might start braking six meters or more earlier than the rider who still has to get his fingers uncurled from the throttle and onto the brake lever. And that doesn't even account for a winter scenario. If you haven't yet experienced the pain of freezing hands on a cold ride, then let me assure you that your frozen fingers will not only execute this move oh, much more slowly, they will also be almost entirely devoid of any feeling. And so forget about being able to modulate the level of input you apply to the brakes, not with any accuracy anyway. Ah, uh, tangent alert, yes. That's another of my personal bugbears. All bikes should be fitted with heated grips for that reason. After ABS, I think it might have the next most significant effect on braking safety in any part of the world where you might ride at, say, anything below about 10 degrees Celsius. Anyway, let me save that rant for another time. Covering the front brake. Essentially, nearly all the time is a habit I highly recommend that you try and adopt as soon as possible. Keeping one or two fingers resting on the lever is going to put you in the best position to get the brakes working as quickly as possible. With a little practice, this will become second nature. After 30 odd years of riding on the road, I just do it naturally now, almost all the time. Incidentally, I still do it on the clutch as well, but that comes from a time of racing two strokes tuned badly, <laughs> beyond all reasonable limits and the threat of an impending maybe even inevitable engine seizure. The same principle though, the quicker you can get to the clutch, the quicker you could hopefully unlock the back wheel from its disaster-inducing skid. 
you will still be able to use the throttle by the way which it doesn't take much force to operate remember you should anyway be using your throttle with a delicate touch with your remaining three or four fingers leaving some of your digits still poised to hit the brakes if they're needed and then there's the rear brake the same principle applies placing your foot so that it hovers just above the lever having it resting on the lever isn't so good even if it isn't enough to actually operate the brake it's probably enough pressure unlike with your fingers to activate the brake light and you don't want to take that early warning system away from any road users who might be behind you I did find this a bit more of an awkward habit to learn, I must admit, but I persisted and now it's second nature to cover the rear brake in places, well, basically in built up areas where the danger levels increase. At other times I, I don't keep it covered. But learning to manipulate my foot like that has, has had other benefits as well, at least for me. It proved useful when I was racing and still proves useful when I'm going a bit adrenaline overload mental on the occasional perfect sunny Sunday in the mountains for the same reasons. In cases of emergency like when you feel you're approaching the edge of the limits of grip and might be running wide on the way into a turn or thinking about it even on the gas on the way out of a turn you can introduce a bit of subtle back brake to help you out a bit. It's not a failsafe by any means, just another tool to be able to try and keep you on the black stuff. And the other benefit, a definite lifesaver if you're, well, if you're an idiot like me, is that having your foot poised over the rear brake is a brilliant, necessary, and so glad you learned it kind of skill for when you get too enthusiastic with your wheelies and it threatens to loop out. It is a weapon of last resort obviously but it really does work it can be refined to help you modulate a wheelie's height more subtly than just as a kind of hail mary last ditch effort to save your bacon but that's a subject for another video okay i'm doing my usual thing of waffling too much please though learn this habit of covering at least your front brake i'm convinced it saved me many many times over the years. I really feel strongly that it's something you should practice until it does become a habit you employ without even realizing you're doing it. 